Sup, you Welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be going over my new project that I'm bringing to the channel. Um, this is a go-kart frame that I bought kind of as a complete go-kart, but I have teared it apart and stripped it down. Main reason being, this steering is off to the left and so was the chair. It was mounted off to the left because the motor was so big they couldn't really fit it with, it, with the chair being in the center. So um, that's not very comfortable for me. I rather have, you know, the chair and the steering in the center. So I'm putting it back to the center. That's why the motor had to come off and all this kind of stuff. It was a five speed. So it had this little handle thing here with the, you know, the motorcycle clutch and the chain was broken. So I couldn't really ride it right, like right away. And uh, also too, when I stuck a battery to it, I fried everything. So that's fun. I mean, no big deal because I probably wasn't going to use that motor anyway. It would have been cool though, because it's a sick looking motor. It's okay. We're going to use something else. We're going to try a Predator motor first. And if I can't get that to fit, then I'm probably going to spend a little bit more money and grab a Suron motor. So let's get to work on this go-kart. First off, I need to take this axle off. All right, so I took the axle off. The axle is now on the floor. And now I have the room to put the seat where I want to. And right now, this feels about where I want it to be. You know, it's centered. As centered as I can make it and the back very back bottom of this seat comes in line with this one bolt of the axle so i kind of know that's where i want my seat to sit but i have to figure out how i'm going to extend this frame all right so i built on the idea of chopping it back here to extend it i'm actually just going to extend it more from where the actual extension is that my friend did i'm going to inlay it with a smaller pipe and then the outer pipe will be the same width as this, so I'll just weld in a 15 inch piece right where the 9 inch piece used to be. And it should hold up a little bit better. I don't have to mess with any of this back here. Alright, so I went ahead and cut it in half. We have this side getting prepped, trying to get as straight and equal as possible. And then we got this side over here. I took off the brake pedals, the gas pedal and all that. And you know, we're trying to make it as straight as possible over here too. It's somewhat even, it's probably not going to be perfect, but it's okay. It's my first time doing this kind of thing, so it's not really a big deal. All right, so we got the front prepped. We got the back prepped. All you have to do is cut the pipes to make the extension. So I bust out the chop saw, put a metal blade on it, went ahead and cut the pipe. Our three quarter is now 17 inches long and our one inch is 15 and a half inches long. And that should be enough for our extension. Because it's currently raining right now, I'm probably not going to be welding at this moment. I'll probably wait for it to dry up a bit before I get to that. All right, so I prepped and cleaned up the pipes. I still got one more to do here. I'm just using this stripper. Right, let me go grab the package so you can see what I use. I use this for most of my projects. For example, that piece of metal back there has some pretty good, uh, I forget what they call it, mill scale or some, something like that. But it has pretty thick, um, you know, crap on it. So when I have to clean it, this is pretty much the only thing that actually gets it off. Unless I use one of these, but you know, this kind of eats it quick compared to this. I recommend using this for, you know, stripping crap. All right, so here's the idea. Basically, I'm gonna be putting this pipe through the other pipe and it sticks out just a little bit so that I can go inside each side of the frame. And then I'm gonna be welding it in place probably towards the top of where I'm gonna mount it. So it's like that, you know, it's gonna have gap over there. I'll weld it together like that and then shave it down a little bit just to make it fit better 
and then we're gonna weld it through. But yeah, bo on both sides, it's gonna be towards the top as much as I can get it. And that should help give a little bit more support than just welding the bar to the bar. When I chopped it off, it pretty much looked like the extension was just a one inch bar to the other side and there was no like support beam in the middle. So I'm gonna be putting one just in case. I'm a little heavier than the other dudes are. So that should help, that should work. All right, so I got the bar welded. And as you can see, it's towards the top on this side and towards the top on this side. Now that's gonna go towards the top of the frames to try and give some support. I'm probably gonna weld it a little bit more where it is able to be welded to this other pipe just to give it a little bit more strength. And then I'm gonna try to shave it back down so it has a lip to bind up with the rest of the go-kart. Although I do have a tripod to record, you know, for whatever reason, this phone's too big for it, so I can't fit my phone in there. Maybe I can try to use my old phone to get some footage, but we'll, we'll see. These are pretty shit welds, but it should work. I just gotta grind them down. I might re-weld it a little bit more, we'll see. I was trying to get the settings right, because every time you work on something new, you pretty much have to redo the settings to work with that type of metal, or what you're doing, or how thick it is, you know? But. I mean, I didn't really figure it out just yet. I probably still should uh, fuck with the settings so I get it right, but you know, it is welded on uh, both sides. I still have that bottom half that isn't welded because the gap is a little big. We can try to see if I can fill something in there. I probably am gonna weld it um, to it as well, but yeah, it doesn't really need to be. All right, we got both extensions welded completely all the way around. I grinded it down so that it can still fit into the pipe and yeah it feels super heavy and sturdy so i'm sure this should hold up great got the whole frame extended i still need to add some support i will figure that out after i get the seat situation kind of figured out and i still need to do the final welds on it but for now it is together it does support me at the way it is well obviously i'm still gonna add support because i, I don't want it to break um this is for the seat sliders that I've purchased. I don't know if I'm, but I'm guessing from what this says, this is where I mount the seat, and this is what I mount to the actual go kart. So I need to grab bolts for the chair. The other bolts come with, I have bolts that come with it. I can use those for the actual mounting to the go kart. But for the seat, I have these big ass. Where to go? Oh, it's in my pocket. Okay. That scared the shit out of me. Okay, so I have this one bolt. It's kind of thick, boy. So it doesn't really fit through here. I'm, I'm gonna have to extend the holes or, I mean, increase the the hole size. And I gotta get like three more of these cause, because I only have one right now. So I need three more of these to make this fit onto that and for that to fit onto that. And then we have adjustable seats for the go-kart. So anyone can ride it that's shorter than I am, basically. I guess the other thing we're gonna be either figuring out in this video or possibly the next one would be the angle for the go-kart. So being that this is flat like this, as you can see, that is the maxed out, you know, angle I can get on the go-kart and that's not enough for what I need it for. So my plan is to weld a rod where it kind of comes out. It's hard to do with one hand, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna have a rod that kind of comes out like that and it will allow the cart to have that much more fucking angle. So I'm gonna have like a pipe there and then a flat piece for it to bolt to. And or I might just weld the piece right here. We should be mint. So what I did is I made these pieces over here, which are gonna be welded straight on and the plate for the wheels will weld straight to that. So I went ahead and made these about three inches wide from here to here. There is a 45 degree angle one side and a 10 degree angle on the other side. So it's just a little bit like this. All right, so yesterday I showed you guys the pieces I made. I went ahead and tacked it up. All I gotta do now is put this on. I have these little helpers here to help me with this and put it on the way I want it. Weld it in place, mock, you know, mock try it out. See how the angle is. Hopefully the tacks hold for that. And yeah, should be good after that. All right, we got it tacked up here. Let's go ahead and test fit it. Oh fuck, it's hot. Hello, you just welded it. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and test fit the wheel and see how it fits and then see if we have the massive angle that we want. All right, here it is. So it looks like we have enough clearance here. I might have to bend up the end, but that's really not that much of an issue. But look how much angle we have now. It is full lock. 
So I'm very happy with that. I just got to go ahead and weld up the rest of it, but it is looking good. All right, we got the other side welded up and same thing. We got all the angle in the world now. All I got to do is figure out the tie rod system later, but let me go ahead and finish welding this up because it's just packed in currently. Yep, that looks like enough angle. All right, so we got this go-kart seat here. We got the seat rails installed. Seat rails took a little bit of persuading. Had to use a Dremel to open up the holes a bit more for the bolts. I used 3 8 16 one inch bolts, I believe, to hold the seat in, but I did have to add some spacers on the bottom because the bolt was just too big a little bit. But it kind of works out because it's warped underneath there and now it's kind of straight. Anyway, that's mounted. Now I gotta mount these sides to a piece of metal. Once I bolt it to the piece of metal, then I can decide where I'm welding it in. And also I have to take this bar and probably shorten and cut it in half because I need this bar to make the seats move. But obviously, as you can tell, it's just a little too wide for my application. Over the time, I've gotten an engine. It's a Predator 212 CC. And I went ahead and welded one more support right here. Well, not too bad. Came out a lot better. All right, like I said, we have the middle support there finally, so I can mock up the seat brackets. I'm going to be cutting them about 20 inches because I'll have some extras on this side and I can cut it off and weld it that way. But this is, this should be enough. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these. I went ahead and cut the seat brackets, drilled out the holes, lined them up with the seat rail. And I went ahead and welded the adjuster together because obviously in a normal seat, it's super wide. But for this go-kart, it's close together. So I had to bring the adjuster closer together. But yeah, it seems to work. All I gotta do left is bolt this actually to the rails and then weld it to the cart. And I should be done with that. All right, now that I got the whole adjustable seat slider together, all I gotta do now is weld these in place in the desired place that I want it. And that is it. All right, so last night I got the seat all sorted out. Today I'm welding it on. Finally, these are the seat rails. I got it tacked in currently. All I have to do is weld them in, then I can finally bolt the seat to the actual rails and have an adjustable seat for this thing. Pretty excited. All right, so it's a little bit later from the last time I recorded a video on this go-kart. In the time being, I have gotten a sprocket from a friend who used to own this go-kart. I probably gotta buy a replacement outside later, but for now, it will, it will work. Um, I went ahead and cut off the side and made this little area for the engine amount. I had to bring it out just a little bit so the bolts would go through. This is the plate I'm going to use. I just got to cut it off and drill the holes for it. And then I'll go ahead and make final adjustment and then weld it in place so it won't move from there. The engine kind of sits a little wider than the wheels. It comes out a little bit wider than the wheels, but it's honestly not too bad. Not as bad as it would have been before. But uh, yeah, now the, cent the seat is centered, which I've noticed on most go-karts is not the case. The seat's always offset to the left, so the engine can fit a little bit tighter. But I'm not racing this go-kart. I'm just gonna be, you know, sliding it. So it should be fine for what I'm doing. This is all my first time doing this kind of thing. It's been a hell of a process. I've, I've enjoyed the making this go-kart. Tons of welding, tons of fab work, and it's it's been awesome, honestly. I also wanted to mention I finally bought this dude right here, this little level. And now I'm part of Team Milwaukee, which is uh, exciting because I was always Team Makita. But this is my first Team Milwaukee piece right here. I don't know if I'm fully committing to their brand, but I do like the brand. I just already started on Makita. You can't really just swap out without spending a shit ton of money. So this is pretty level. It's as level as it needed to be. I know this piece is probably just a tad bit higher than this side, but not that much it's still level as far as this level tells me it's still level this side has warped a little bit unless this is tape right here eh, it's still pretty level it's not perfect but it, it's better than what it would have been if i didn't have this little thing here i also ordered the tie rods finally so they should be coming in i was going to make them myself but i couldn't find these heim joints at any hardware store around here so it's kind of forced to buy. I could have just still made the rod, but 
kind of forced to buy the, the uh, Heim joints from them. And then if my tie rods don't work with this setup correctly or if they're not their correct length, I can just go ahead and make my own next time. Let's see, anything else new? No, that's pretty much it. I did order some locking collars because I noticed unless my brakes are fully bled in, they kind of move around and I want this to sit up as close as it is and, you know, lock it in right there or lock it in on this side right here so it doesn't move back and forth. I don't want any movement in the axle since I'll probably knock off the chain. I am going to go ahead and fully weld this on here because this is not fully welded and I did not prep this very well so the welds didn't really come out too great on it but as long as it sticks in place it should be fine but I got to go ahead and take the chair off, flip the cart upside down and go ahead and weld the other side and get this all strong here. All right, so I went ahead and finished welding up the bottom of this engine mount. And uh, well, it came up pretty good on over there. Not bad, it's pretty mean. But it's sure is strong. It's kind of hot, so I can't really do, can't really touch it right now. But that should work. All I got to do is cut the plate now over there, drill the holes for the engine, and boom, we have the engine on the cart finally. All right, so this is how the engine is mocking up. Yesterday, I got rained the fuck out, so I had to stop what I was doing because it was raining onto the exposed metal but i kind of got the chain aligned here this is kind of where it needs to be mounted the sketchy part is i got to drill the holes accurately where they are at to mount the engine um once i get it the engine mounted to the plate then i can move it left and right to line it up with this how it is right now then i need to weld it which the welding part ain't the scary part like i said drilling the holes is the most crucial part of this because if i fuck up on the holes and the engine doesn't mount to the plate i gotta use the other side of the plate and i only got two chances at this hopefully i get it done on the first chance or first try all right so the holes are drilled the bolts are in these are not the permanent bolts because as you can see they're just sticking out a shit ton mainly because i bought longer because i expected to be going through an inch tube into it but instead i went with this plate idea which is more simpler so the, the holes are drilled. All I gotta do now is get some proper size bolts, stick it on there, and then I can like adjust it left and right until it lines up really well. Weld the plate in place and I should be done. Glad the holes came out. I used this diagram on my phone from the standard 212 Predator thing and I just kind of whimmied it and it worked. So now the engine is mounted. Let's go. We got power to the wheels finally. We got the engine mounted, bolts in, welded in place, chain on. It just make a lot of noise because of the fucking uh, gas tank ain't really on right now. It's just kind of rattling. We got the throttle right here. Okay, it died. Let me try this again. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do this one handed. All right, <clears throat> so the tie rods came in and unfortunately I ordered just a little too long. I couldn't really measure it really well, but uh, yeah, this is about centered right here. And as you can see, this wheel is pointing in and that wheel is pointing in. It still doesn't have the plate yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the plate so it actually moves and I can see how much angle I'm gonna be getting with the setup, but I am gonna be ordering a little bit shorter tie rods. I'm not too sure what the size yet. These are currently 295s and uh, they almost were there, but like you can see, this is straight and the wheels just turned in a little bit. So yeah, I'm gonna order a bit smaller. I'll let you guys know what size when I go ahead and finish, you know, when I have it come in. All right, so I added the angle plate. Again, unfortunately, the tie rods are still too long, but now when I steer, I can get max angle out of the wheel. Unfortunately, because the tie rods are too long, this side does not come in all the way. And same for that side, it comes all the way in for angle and then this side doesn't come in all the way. So once I get those shorter tie rods, I should be set. I think that's where the steering wheel is gonna be mounted. So I'll probably just go ahead and weld up about right there and Still gotta kinda like tie down the throttle cable. It's kind of wonky. I still have to actually make a plate for the bottom tray that I cut crookedly to actually sit in place and be like sturdy. I can put my feet on it, I don't have to worry. And then I have to situate the brakes because this is very old, a very old setup. I don't think it's leaking, but one side is just seized out right there. The other side isn't. So I'll see if I can bleed there somehow. I ordered some parts for it already. So hopefully when they come in, I should be good to go. All right, so since the last video I think I did 
we might have got the throttle cable worked out i don't know but we have the throttle cable worked out so now i got throttle this is just a temporary setup my neighbor went ahead and gave me this setup right here which is going to work a lot better but i have to make a mount for it in the future so for testing purposes i'm going to use this once i figure out the cart works and all that kind of stuff i'll go ahead and use this throttle cable i'll, I'll get that wired in finally ended up getting the right side tie rods that are about perfect i probably should have went shorter honestly because this is like maxed out on both sides i think this one's out a little bit it's like the perfect size for it at the moment and i do have to get some hardware for this because i do want the tie rods to be able to move a lot more i'm going to use spacers so they get full motion and then i have to redo that plate because it's i, I drew the holes just a little too big these are only eight millimeter bolts it has a lot of play if i tighten it up it won't have that play but i'd rather just have the perfect size hole so there's zero play in it all together and then i have to go ahead and weld these up to a plate i wish i had a thinner plate but that's the only plate i could find that i still have around so i'm going to be using that plate and just weld it to these bars and then make some holes so that i can drill or i can bolt this straight to that piece to keep it upright all right so we got the steering welded in it's in a nice spot i think i'm gonna buy an extender that comes off of here maybe like a couple inches and allow the wheel to sit up a little bit further so my knees get more clearance but for the angle i think it's the best that i could do everything is tapped up down here only so i still gotta weld it fully around but at the moment this is looking real good with the new tie rods that i don't know if i mentioned it i think i did actually steering is straight now um, I should have went smaller though. I really do think I, sh I should have went smaller. But yeah, we're gonna go get that hardware soon and put that in and hopefully everything works out without steering bind or anything. And yeah, hopefully it's it's good, man. I can't wait to test this out. I still gotta get the brakes done. But after I weld this together, that's all there is, is just brakes. All right, so I went ahead and welded this handbrake bracket. I probably forgot to show that, sorry. But uh, we have this on here. I did the piping for the brakes we have working brakes now i think i still need to bleed it a little bit because i see air bubbles here but we'll see you know when that comes to it but yeah we have a functioning brake i got the hardware these are spacers these are able to keep the uh tie rods having all the play they need and um i made this here <clears throat> this is a tensioner chain tensioner so now there's no slack in the chain anymore um that is a homemade pulley that i made with like shit out of city mill and there isn't much over there so i made what i made it uh it does work oh i'm gonna test it out right now and see if it works i mean the it mounts up perfectly fine i have a pulley on the way from amazon that should replace that and work great so we should be good so the item that does work as you can see i don't know how long it's gonna work for but it's working currently and that's completely homemade with shitty mill parts um, it got all the tension out of my chain, so the other day I took it for a test drive and the chain kept popping off. Um, that should totally get rid of that problem now. I'm hoping. But for something I made in like, with, dude, look at this shit. This rubber chain is on the floor, it was a full piece, and I made it into a pulley. I, I'm very proud of myself for that. Alright, so the go-kart is complete. I still have to do some welding before I paint, but everything is basically welded to the, the cart. The extra welds are just for extra welds. They're not really needed because it's holding up perfectly. I did find some issues. My chain tends to come off a shit ton. That may have to do with my axle being a little warped as well as the sprocket being a little worn out. So in the future, I'm going to have to get a new sprocket and a new axle and maybe some new bearings. But other than that, the cart has been working pretty freaking well. Um, I noticed that the sleeves tend to move a little bit. Usually they try to go either off one or the other side. And to kind of combat that, I've been using duct tape, which works pretty pretty well because I went for a whole session and only the chain came off. The, the sleeves didn't slide off, but they're trying to. You can see that they're a little pushed over than where they were originally. So the next time I'm gonna be using grip tape on the inside of the PVC to try to see if that'll keep it in place. Also my exhaust rattled off. As you can see, it's loose right now. That keeps rattling off. I have no fucking idea why. I, I, I think there's just so much vibration from this skidding around and the axle being so warped that it just knocks everything loose. Um, I put these bars in here. I don't think I talked about them. I put these bars in here so that when I come to like max lock, 
it doesn't go over and tuck the wheel in because at this point usually the wheel the control arm will go in and it will tuck the wheel into that while the other wheel still is just like that so um i kind of put those there to kind of stop that they're not the prettiest but they work they do what they need to do other than that i stuck some license plates on it we got nothing illegal here damn that plate's getting dirty i probably should have bought another one because this one has stuff on the back but you know it is what it is i'm sure i can get another one we have the cali plate from the blazer but yeah it is currently running pretty damn well i had a friend test it out the chain is coming off like before so that's pretty much the main issue that i'm having once i get that new axle and the new sprocket hopefully that's fixed i also gotta weld this retainer and kind of reinforce it it used to be rubbing on the outside of that pulley now it's rubbing on the inside after i rewelded it which is not bad i just got to remove some of those washers on that side and that should keep it in the center and hopefully not eat it up as much but yeah the cart is functioning it does drift um i can't wait to get some videos for you guys but unfortunately i don't have a, my gopro micro sd so i can't really get the gopro footage today but maybe in the future well, I was gonna take you guys around the block, but unfortunately, not the glove, but I pulled the start off. So I'm just gonna take you around this road. And we'll see how I can film this, but unfortunately, if the chain falls off, I gotta push it home. Oh, I almost died too. Many people post their drift go-karts and their drift trikes and stuff like that but no one really talks about how long these sleeves last and i say you get about like a, a solid couple hours of session out of each one depending on the terrain you're on i guess because if you have a shit ton of rocks in the road you're gonna be eating these up like crazy and potentially just cracking them off so be wary of where you try to slide these carts the smoother the better but uh yeah if you hit rocks in a road you have a likeness of cracking your sleeve also if you install the hydro like i did please be wary when once the pipe gets hot you're going to be flat spotting areas so that will cause extra vibration as well it's not just my axle doing this it's also the flat spots of the pipes that i create whenever i do the e-brake slides make cool entries and shit like that that's another reason why the tires are just flopping as you can see in the same area here and the same area there this is just a flat spot thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed the video again i highly recommend you guys watch my next video on everything you need to know about drifting go-karts as i will address all the common issues that i came across and um try to provide solutions for them as well as kind of give you information on like pvc pipe sleeves and cost and how long they last and just you know just everything i, I know about drifting go-karts so far i'm gonna try and provide you guys information on like um there's a, a lot of important things that have not been talked about in this video that will be talked about in that video so again please subscribe stay tuned um yeah thank you guys